Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, my name is Ellie and I am the director of INDEX, which is a community space um, for designers and others. Um, and we host programs that are facilitated and instructed by members of our community. So, you know, it could be any of you <laughs> if you wanted it to be. Um, so uh, we opened, Index was founded, we opened in um, the spring of 2021, which is a year after we closed the doors of our East Village location, which is called 31. And by now we had always expected that we would have our own space um, to host events like this in. Um, and we looked for real estate on and off since uh, January 2020. And we had this like great fantasy for what this real estate would look like. It would be like 15,000 square feet and a storefront. And we would be able to have like shared desk studio space and a bookstore and a wine bar. And, you know, um, anyway, the perfect real estate does not exist. <laughs> um, or at least it hasn't yet, maybe it will. Um, so a few months back when our friend Jonathan Magan introduced us to Johannes, and Johanna said, great, um, I would love to do a talk at Index. Let me fly to New York and give it in person. Um, we were very stumped for a minute. We had no idea what to do. Um, and to us, like being in person like this is always better than, or as good as being online. Um, and we've been doing Zoom only events um, for the past year. And like, there's kind of nothing like this. It just doesn't really compare. So. Um, Jonathan had another great idea, you know, how about we ask the other means guys if they would be willing to let us use their space for the event. Um, and uh, as much as I wish I could have welcomed you all into our own space tonight, um, in a way it's actually almost more index um, to be here. Um, index is founded on the belief that generosity is not depletive. It doesn't, it doesn't go away, you don't lose by giving. Um, by sharing what you have with the community. And we believe that because we've seen evidence of it everywhere. Um, the graphic design community is consistently a generous one. It's motivated not by selfishness, but by relationships and ideas and genuine enjoyment with one another. And the whole experience of producing this event has been indicative of that. And if that's something that you believe in um, and you want to support and sustain, that is the work of index. So you can support us by signing up for more programs or offering programs. Um, you can buy a hat or a tote <laughs> on our store. And later in the summer, when I'm back in, in, back in the city and moving for a little while, you can also buy books from our bookstore. And I will ship them to you from my apartment. <laughs> um, or you can support our work with a monthly, uh, by becoming a pal. Um, we have a, a patron suit and liaison program, which is a monthly contribution that folks can make at any amount um, via Patreon. And if that's something that you're interested in, you can go to indexspace.org slash join and become a pal. So um, I want to give a really big thank you to Jonathan, if you're listening, he's in California, um, for getting this band together. And I really want to thank Gary and Ryan for letting us camp here tonight. Really cool. Thank you so much. Uh, flying here from Berlin to give this talk with us. Thanks. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. I'm very grateful for, to, to see that many people. Um, I have a an ambitious 140 slides. So <laughs> I calculated if, if I spend like 30 seconds, it's gonna be two hours. So let's see, I think I'm already like 30 seconds behind. So um, I might rush over a couple of, of slides or maybe I can talk longer about others. And always like, if you wanna know something or like pause me, you can always like interrupt me and stuff. Um, so I'm very excited to be back in New York. Like last time I've been in New York was 2016 and kind of one of my memories is, um, the lecture uh, I gave at an invitation of Sean Yendries, who I don't know, some of you might know him. He's a great friend of mine and a teacher and graphic designer who now lives in Berlin. But back in New York, he gave these like apartment lectures and um, he invited um, me here in the, in the picture together with Burton Hasebe, who's also a type designer and like great hero of mine to give a lecture, kind of uh, kind of a ping pong lecture together. And that was a huge, huge honor to me. Um, yeah, because I was still a little baby and Burton was one of my heroes. 
So that was like six years ago. And so being back here in, in New York is uh, it's a great feeling. And yeah, thanks to, to Ellie and Jonathan to making this work to, for inviting me. And then also like Gary and Ryan, of course, for hosting that event. Like, so it all means a lot to me. Thanks for coming. Um, I brought a bunch of chapters with me who all together maybe hopefully kind of reflect a little bit the panopticum that like Dynamo is. I think Dynamo is quite a explosive kind of very varied uh, kind of platform at, at the moment. And I try to like summarize different chapters um, that ho hopefully like give like insight into the different things that we're interested in. I brought a bunch of special effects with me. It took a long time to, to uh, yeah to, to get these like, so yeah, let's start with chapter two, uh, which is a little bit about like the work we do and like, I think like uh, Dynamo kind of works a little bit at the, I don't want to say interact intersection, but I think like it's, it's kind of nice to then also use the word. Um, why we like fonts is I think because they're kind of perfectly blend these two words together, like um, or like worlds like art and kind of tech technology, like in art in the, in the sense that you have a lot of like creative freedom when designing a font. Um, it's kind of you, only you and your own little like kind of echo chamber or the echo chamber of your team. And then you have like technology that you can use and which is constantly evolving and changing. And I think the kind of the fonts that kind of live exactly in, in the middle of that space. So I think that's kind of how we landed there and why I find it so, so interesting. So in a way, the tools always inform your work, right? Like here, for instance, a project we did. Um, so even like as type designers, you, you may think of a test type designer nowadays as someone who produces digital fonts, but like here we produce the font kind of like for a, a 3D concrete printer. And that came with its own like limitations. That was like super interesting to kind of battle against that machine and yes. Can you turn your camera on? My camera. So the people on the Zoom can see. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Can you That's a bit weird. <laughs> but like, anyway, so we produced these benches which had like uh, concrete fonts in them. So in a way also here the technology of, of 3D printing kind of gave reason to shapes and I think that's the kind of interesting kind of um, area that we move in between. So I want to jump to, can I minimize that? Yeah, here, I got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Nice. So I want to jump to like make the, make the big uh, move to like variable fonts, which I think at the moment, not only the moment, but for us at the moment are like the most interesting technology. And I think most people like variable fonts because they, offer this like smart way of uh, packaging fonts, like a lot of styles that used to be like static can be wrapped into like one package and produce like a variable font file in which everything is contained. But I think what we like most is really the, to say it in a cheesy way, the storytelling potential of variable fonts. So I think you know what we're interested in, not the economic aspects, but maybe more like, you know, what can happen between or like inside the spectrum of a variable font, like what happens between from like when you move from like A to B, like what happens in between and how can you kind of manipulate that? So I think I'm gonna show a couple of things that go into that direction. So these are all like variable fonts that have different themes, I would say. Um, yeah, the exciting thing here is definitely that, you know, nowadays you can animate a font and all that is like, it's not a video file, it's just a font uh, embedded in CSS and kind of like, you know, brought to life by, by um, using different inputs. This as well as a variable font kind of coded to, um, hey, coded to like give different kind of, um, like kind of distort the, the position of the different dots. So it's like a dot font, variable font. Hey, okay, just gotta. Or here, I think when we work on projects like these, the, the way these kind of projects come about is that we kind of think, what if this, what if it, the typeface would kind of like expand or what if we think of it almost as a human person, like what does it do? Like are things growing out of here? Or like, you know, we think a lot in these like metaphors, maybe that's because we're more like trained graphic designers. So almost all people from the, like the early days that, you know, more like not really type designers. So we all study graphic design. And I think that also informs a lot, like how we think about font making. Like, I think we always look for this little, thing that, that it does, like maybe the, the kind of story or like the gesture behind it. Uh, I don't know where to put this one, but <laughs> then basically, if you're a bit more serious uh, in the, the type of work that we produce, like let's say the catalog that we kind of run, we also try to like embed the same thinking. So, um, and on the top, you would see like the more like conventional kind of like weight distribution of a typeface, like thin, regular, bold, that's kind of the spectrum. 
but now kind of thinking like what again like if you're looking for this like we had uh, like this kind of engineered surprise in the middle like what could it be and i think with arizona elias the designer was wondering okay what if let's say my story is that the typeface travels across the different genres like from sans to serif and then uh, the italics and stuff but the, the main kind of the story or the, the thing that we would talk ab about the most at the studio would be like this transition uh, this kind of journey through the different um typeface uh, genres basically so the thing here was also that, that again brought like different like restrictions so if you think back to the concrete typeface the tool was kind of the the thing we would fight against and here we would like have to deal a lot with that compatibility so the question here is how do you manage uh, a sans a to kind of become a serif a and everything in between how how do you manage to get this like done fluently so i'm here like already kind of showing a bit like the end result so what elias did really is like him he designed a typeface that in its whole spectrum kind of yeah, co covers these different aspects and also like he, he made sure in the construction uh, construction of the characters that like the, all the transitions are smooth and fluent so what is special here so it's not only that variable fonts like make things easier they also make kind of create a lot of like mind fuck for you because you also have to now prove transitions of shapes from one to another i think he did very well you can see maybe like the, the, the engineering or like how the curves are being drawn inside Arizona. So the tricky thing was that basically each G has all the G's inside it. You could say that. So if I want to have a, a sense like on the left, I have to hide all, like, all the information of the serif G so that the serif G can kind of grow out of it. And that was kind of a lot of like fiddling that we did in the studio, even like writing like scripts to kind of maybe make that step a little bit easier because you have to imagine like many masters, many weights. So you do this all like 30 times and then you have like 800 characters. So there's a lot of sort of drawing work. You can see Elias struggling and figuring it out eventually. So I think that took him like two and a half years and uh, of like kind of creating this like uh, project. So this is like in our studio in Berlin. I would like talk more about us a little later and you can see the construction um, for instance of the g that i just showed so again like it's super important that these transitions happen like smoothly so maybe also because you're kind of thinking of how would people use that typeface and i guess they kind of want to use it like in an animated way as well so to take take kind of new few problems into account so you can see a little bit the, the design process here on the left you can see vanessa from our team she does like a lot, a lot of like accounting and administration with us. And then it's me and Elias here. And Dan, Dan Solbach is a graphic designer. Maybe you know his work as well. Um, so he's in the studio. He's always up for a little criticism. I think it's like a, the worst, worst situation for Elias to be in. Like a lot of opinion, a lot of people are coming around. And on the right, you can see uh, kind of digital proofing. So we proof our fonts like using like PDFs mostly nowadays, not printing really anymore. And, we generate these like long sheets and kind of go over them uh, and share the the notes in the team. Um, yeah, looking at that, I noticed that Dan looks a little bit like like Jan Tricholt, you know, <laughs> the, the famous type designer. So that's a little greeting to Dan. And here you can see the whole like Arizona family that it became and like how we published it. And we kind of also made the decision to give it like five like subfamily names. So having like Sans and Serif at the end, and then you have like mixed in the middle, so, which is literally like 50-50. And then we have player and text uh, kind of blending in between. And that's kind of the, the chunks that we kind of put out. I think when you publish work, it's always a question also like, how do you package it in a way that kind of, you know, people can follow and it's easy for yourself to kind of talk about as well. So I think what was exciting here is kind of that you have, yeah, you can like set a whole magazine or something only in this typeface. If you want something more classic, you have the whole kind of serif spectrum and then you have the sans on top. But the thing I like about the italics is that we kind of decided to keep the serifs kind of straight. So which is a bit strange. And you also get a bunch of like requests to kind of change it. <laughs> Let me... <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think that again, it kind of makes the font become alive a little bit, um, you know, when you want to kind of slide into the italics or it creates like weird 
moment of friction, which I think is kind of important. Um, so I think whenever we, we work uh, on a new font, we kind of try to, to find like the theme or something in the studio. So we, it also helps us to kind of discuss the work or kind of maybe even be able to, to judge it in a way. So again, we like all, it's not true. Like now we have type designers working with us, um, but like for, for, for a long time, like when Fabian and I started, we had to like find the kind of the thing we're interested in to say, okay, this font is about that. And once we have achieved that, then you know we can maybe publish it. Then we like done because there's always the question of would you ever be done with the work or kind of what is the work about? So I think with Gravity, so the type is the next font I'm going to show you. I think the whole story was about like weights and you know in in Arizona we go into like more like a 4D kind of thing with the serifs and and sands, but here we go into like the the widths, but limit the weights. Different special effect. Cool dust, smoke. Um, gravity started with this kind of width, which is kind of a semi-wide um, setting. And uh, so we would draw around this a little bit and then we thought, okay, maybe we kind of need a bit more, like what, what could, it, could it do to become, yeah, something we, we would like to like, you know, write on a napkin, kind of describe the idea. And then we kind of fleshed it out from like X, 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 X compressed to like, you know, super wide on the other end of the spectrum. So. The interesting thing was here again that each kind of like <laughs> each drawing, uh, each width needs it needs its little treatment. Um, you know, so like it's kind of easy to draw like smooth and round and nice, like nice and curvaceous shapes. But the more condensed and compressed you get, you, you get into this like territory where, where the, the drawing loses a lot of soul quite quickly, uh, unless you really want a constructed font. But here, I think uh, Rob, who, who worked on this typeface, um, yeah, he, he was really dealing a lot with like curve pressure and kind of assigning that uh, to different parts of the widths. A little meme. So the topic was how wide can you go? No. Um, proofing uh, is, is a big thing also, of course, like you need to like kind of proof the font, like proof different aspects of the font. And with gravity, again, the proofing was more like or it required a different like mindset in a way for us because we had to like prove kind of yeah like kind of make sure that the, the gestures translate across the widths in a, in a similar way so you would still have the feeling that the the y gravity wide kind of also like is is like the brother to gravity normal or gravity compressed so our proofing sheets uh, for for gravity looked a little bit like top left so you just look at one style like and you focus on one style and just like you know let let that kind of do the talking and otherwise you would have a lot of these type of sheets where we looked at the transition a lot. In the bottom, for instance, the comment would be uh, weight. You know, the weight was kind of too light. So it's really important to see everything you're working on at the same time to be able to kind of make sure it's kind of balanced. Oops. I think I'll start. Uh-huh. Yeah, and again, as it's a variable font, you can kind of smoothly go in between. So I think how designers work with it at the moment, I see that they like, you know, install the variable font, maybe the trial, and then they kind of adjust, adjust it to exactly the setting they want. And then they kind of, yeah, then I don't know exactly what the next step is. I think we have to figure it out because sometimes it's difficult if a designer, you know, wants the G to be exactly in between, I have to kind of make this work somehow, maybe like generate a file for them. but. That can be more a bit more tricky, but yeah, it, it's it's more of a toolbox. I think that's what we find interesting. Yeah, I think that's kind of the dream scenario. Maybe uh, using different widths, kind of together, kind of working on a tool for that at the moment that maybe makes makes it easier for you for 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 the designers to, you know, say okay, this is my the, the width I have for the table, and this is my word, and then like fill it like fill it for me, uh, because at the moment you would have to do this like manually. Um, it was super nice to see the, the NBA to the non-fungible token project and um, use different widths of gravity together, like mixed together. So that was super nice to, that was kind of one of the dream scenarios for us to imagine. Again, when I think like, you know, when I remember, or when I think of the conversations we have at the office, it's more like we look at fonts and think, okay, like, what are they doing? Like, what are the individual characters doing also? 
so very much uh, i think we think like graphic designers here so and then like ideas like this come come about like you know could the lowercase characters could they jump up you know could they squeeze could they like kind of like you know, change the types that the, how tight the lines are set or like what are the, the the jokes or the gestures that we could have planned in here so gravity also has different settings um you know you have you can install a font and you can can like activate different like stylistic sets and they kind of make yeah they kind of change the character a lot and i think that's kind of cool to see yeah we also like thought you know, like work with terabond i don't know if you like uh, for the fitness freaks here like it's like kind of a fitness band company and we work with them did like gravity band that kind of does the, does the same same as the font does okay so talking about something more serious um we worked like also maybe as an example of how we work with with variable fonts when we work for clients so we were commissioned to design a new typeface for Primova, which is like a, a suitcase i would say luxury suitcase company from cologne so it's like a german kind of company with a lot of uh, history and a lot of like craft kind of um, legacy um so we were trying to find cues for the font like how we could kind of like do something that is speaks of you know the product itself but also speaks of like their history and also maybe where they want to go because i think if you, if you have been following the company they're doing a lot of like collaborations and like they're really opening up so it had to also it, it shouldn't uh, to kind of the brief was that it shouldn't be like dusty or like kind of backwards looking too much so we like went to the archive in the factory here found a lot of like super interesting also like older like suitcases you know back in the days they would you could order like a remover suitcase with like a cocktail bar inside i mean now you get like an iphone case <laughs> but like you know it changed but it was super nice to see um where they come from and then we also like visited the archive for like all the communication history found these like little you know patent filings or like booklets stuff like that and then we also like kind of located these three fonts that they've been using a lot since since their foundation and we then like kind of used a um like a, a self-made variable font to kind of blend different aspects of these fonts together and that was kind of how we so here variable fonts are not like a client facing um a thing but it was more like something for us in the lab to say kind of like maybe come closer to the kind of look we wanted so we we made a variable font that merges these different uh, aspects of these different kind of legacy typefaces together and then together with the the client we kind of like literally like mixed different ingredients together and kind of until we had like hit, hit the right tone like the one we kind of like thought would maybe maybe fit most so here we were really like kind of super helpful to like work this way and also i think for the client was kind of nice to be a bit like part of it i think the slide that then sold the project was maybe still uh, this slide you know <laughs> kind of you know referencing the project the product justifying the curves i learned the term executive summary in this project <laughs> so we had to um you know always condense our big presentations down to like nine slides or something and then a slide like that comes in very handy um let's see yeah remova so if you look around you can see the font in use now let's see next chapter how are we doing on the time okay third chapter i thought would be maybe nice to talk a little bit about dynamo itself and kind of like how we work and how uh, you know maybe the bigger things we went through or like what we kind of learn or like keep keep kind of like learning or like what call our interests so dynamo started um with fabian and me you can see Fabian the next slide but that's a little bit like my little like the little things i went through is that i um I'm German and then I went to Switzerland because I was kind of interested in the kind of the Swiss design um, story and history. And then, yeah, I went to Zurich and enrolled in the, in the art school there. And uh, it was a really like kind of tough, but also craft oriented and kind of really like, you know, very formal and very good, like kind of training. And you can see like here, this is my, my type design teacher. You know, he would literally, you know, don't think this exists really, but like, you know, he would really like talk about the, the tiny details of like, 
you know, drawing these like very old looking fonts in the back. Um, so I like studied there for two years. Um, then I did a, uh, one year with Norm, who like, you know, they are also graphic designers and they like, um, you know, run a really um, special kind of practice, I would say, where they're again at intersection, I think of like graphic design and type design. So like they really taught me this, this whole attitude of, of, you know, making your own tools, making your own fonts, like instead of like choosing tools, making the tools and, and kind of, you know, wearing your own underwear kind of kind of thing. So that was really like uh, super nice to work with them. And they're like really like, yeah, it's like a bit of a foster family to me. And then I went to the Gerrit Academy afterwards and that kind of totally fucked me up in a way because I thought, you know, like I had all these books and stuff from Switzerland and then in Amsterdam, I think they they quite quickly taught me to kind of forget about that. And, uh, you know, I had to like write a theater script and so on. And I think all of these stations are really important like nowadays. So I think um, the Riedfeld at the end really, I think taught me or like gave me the, the it, it kind of clicked with um, in terms of like, I think what we do at as Dynamo in terms of like lightly dealing with, you know, the rules, but also like trying to like, you know, create your own cosmos. And I think that's very much um, from Amsterdam, but yeah, the, the, the craft and the, you know, the grids and stuff like that, I think came in very handy uh, when I was like confused you know, here. Then um, very lucky for me to meet Fabian. Um, he's my, my founding partner and one of my best friends. And we met in Switzerland. So he was studying at Basel. And we just like became, became friends and kind of exchanging uh, to get like, you know, doing stuff together. And then we would kind of youthfully or like, you know, very innocently like kind of start to like exchange like font sketches uh, and kind of send them back and forth. It was really like romantic in a way like literally working on the same file uh, and, and then kind of overriding each other's uh, curves and stuff. Um, and then after we we uh, we did our bachelor's, so like after Zurich for me, um, we we kind of got commissioned to do like a, a catalog together. So we were already a bit of a team, but it was very loose. And when we went to Berlin to kind of work and present the catalog, we kind of like, you know, had a bit of our foundation dinner. So I would say 2012 is when we started. Huh? That's some disgusting big meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to find a salad there these these years. Um, then a day later, we we're already a bit more corporate, you know, with the corporate clothes. <laughs> um, uh, say no dumplings. I think with meat filling this time. Um, so that kind of this like shooting our own like company picture became a bit of a of a thing for us. Here we went to like. Uh, yeah, this is a really good, good, good spot. Like we went to like an art school for a lecture in Germany. They had this like photo studio. <laughs> and it's funny because like, this is the picture people don't really know. And then, you know, oh, well, we showed ourselves. But we're kind of using this like, you know, as an introduction to us and, and other people kind of pick up on that. I think it's thinking that's our studio. Um, I gave a presentation at Apple a month ago and they, you know, like, very like you know reviewed the presentation with their like legal team and then they sent it back you can see the peers kind of being censored uh so that was <laughs> it, like space gray i guess you know um yeah and then i think like you know we did all kind of like stuff like i think the years that the, the years that followed were like rock and roll um you know i still studied fabian had a job um you know we did a lot of freelancing kind of separate from each other uh, both lived in Berlin um, and kind of like, but like kind of very dedicatedly, but loosely like collaborated. And then 2017, something really nice happened that we won the Swiss Design Awards and that came with, with good money. And so basically for the first time we, we had money to say, okay, we're going to keep, keep going with this. And, and we kind of gonna, gonna, you know, take this very seriously and gonna found Dynamo. So if you look in our books, 2017 is where we kind of like, uh, kind of did the, founded the company. And the thing that we did, which I think was really important, is that we bought each other's work from each other with that price money. Mm -hmm. So this is a bit uh, specific, but like I think some of you might 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 have done something like that, or like will do something like that. So we realized that we have like separate work, you know, so like net nighttime uh, <laughs> nighttime sketches uh, and stuff, but we didn't know um, 
wasn't sure like who like wasn't clear like who owns it and stuff like that you know and then we've realized okay maybe it's easier if we you know make sure like you know make it easy for ourselves and we, we knew that we wanted to go forward together so we said okay it should be 50 50 whatever we do and in order for it to be 50 50 dynamo should own the work and then we had the price money so we counted all the characters that we had drawn and i think a character was like four euro or something you know five dollars and then Fabian had drawn a bit more than I, so he got a bit more money. <laughs> but basically from then onwards uh, and up to today, everything we do is like owned by the company it's, uh, and it's 50-50. So I think that's something I can recommend for you to do. So not, not get into like weird other territory of asking yourselves who owns what and stuff. I think if you're a partner, you should like be like full partners. Party is over. So like from here, from this moment of purchasing the IP, um, you know, we like thought, okay, it's going to be a, be a proper company now and uh, one thing we did is that we started to see like a, a coach so this is also really nice for us um and we still do that so he helped us with this whole thing of getting you know founding the company and kind of you know discussing how we want to do it and uh we liked it so much to talk to him that we still see him like so maybe like you know at the beginning maybe every six months and now like once per year we visit him in a little like a chalet kind of thing like a house you know like a barn and it's michael and you know we, we really do this you know where we like think okay what are we doing what do the fonts mean to us what what are the challenges um are we all happy and then we like have a glass of wine and so on so we do these like long sessions uh, for over two days usually and that really i think is this part of why i think we, we consider us like a, a healthy company because we have a lot of reflection and we together put a lot of time time to that so sometimes when we run into like difficult situations we we say to each other like what would michael say you know like could you see, could you explain this move to michael you know and then sometimes you know like ah maybe not and that's a good good sign anyway so these are like five conclusions um yeah we concluded okay dynamo's teamwork super important for us we're like a team we're not only two people anymore but like we really yeah uh, we like work together with people and, and we all kind of rely on each other and that's super important also in terms of for instance crediting um you know everybody's being credited people have a lot of, a lot of voice and i think that's that's important for us then um, we kind of focus ourselves on uh, to like making and publishing fonts then we also make and publish tools some of you maybe use the font gauntlet it's one of our more popular tools and then we make fonts with and for other people clients aka and we make hardware which is like the counterpart to, to software and for instance there's a lot of stuff whatever is not on the list we don't really do so for instance we don't do graphic design anymore which is kind of a little bit sad but we we realized that we kind of like the rhythm of type design a bit more and it, on the other hand that's also no choice because the type design it needs a lot of maintenance uh, to keep the to keep the machine running so i think we had kind of eventually said goodbye to graphic design also like to be honest with you we don't really get graphic design commissions you know so it doesn't happen yeah like some people just to shout them out from from our team we had these like renderings made that are a bit like office heroes you know sitting on a printer with a beamer projector and so on um yeah so at the moment i just like a bit the representation of these like five areas tool making font making hardware making and project with others and four others so this is the typeface we did for for other means on the bottom right which is nice to see and use still on the website then um yeah we have two offices or well, like it, it's actually changing at the moment but we like work from basel and berlin mostly so yeah our whole story also changed um Fabian had a kid with his wife nina together and moved to move to, to switzerland so i was in berlin and he was in Switzerland since then we basically have this like distance relationship and yeah with all its ups and downs I would say um mostly ups so like these are these two two places that we work from but at the moment it's totally changing because we like kind of off opened uh, uh an office in Porto because Fabian again is kind of moving to has, has moved and has moved to Porto so we're kind of opening kind of closing the whole switzerland uh, business and then kind of will be porto and berlin in the future so this is like literally they're just taken two months ago i think the picture uh, we can see firu and uh, henan on the, in the garden shot on the top 
Yeah, one thing with Porto, the only problem, we have very small coffee cups. So if you come, you're going to be hiring soon and you have to bring, might be able to bring adult sized coffee cups with you. Help Fabian. Um, tools, different chapter, kind of forgot the chapter title. Uh, so I think uh, I'm particularly very interested in you know, this, this whole, uh, you know, how, how to work and what do you work on and what, what are the tools and could you shape your own tools, questions like that. And I think um, type design also literally asks, asks for that. So like you have, um, yeah, a lot of re recurring, um, like repetitive work to do, or like sometimes the stuff that you just, the eye doesn't see, you know? Um, so like we're constantly wondering, like, is there like a script that we could write that helps us with a particular step? So here, for instance, um, these are like proofing uh, PDFs that we like up to recently we were like doing ourselves. So you'll know, you know, in InDesign, you like install a font and then you like make these like crazy PDFs by hand. And this can take like long time. It's very repetitive and, the, you know, the management doesn't like repetitive tasks. So like we have to... Um, you know, gave incentive to kind of do that maybe in a, in a better way. So um, Rob kind of started developing a script that now allows us to make these like PDFs uh, kind of um, in a more simple way. The eager eye maybe notices the publication shoplifters here put to great use. So <laughs> to every like uh, aspiring type designer would propose to use the book in a similar way to not get too distracted but obviously it's a very good publication here we can see Hannon and and uh rob working together like remotely Hannon in basel and, and rob in berlin with me so how the proof generator works it's you know you can on the, on the first picture you can see like you can define the type of character set or preview that you want to generate and then you you know hit preview or like hit export and then kind of does that for you and within no time it kind of makes these um, you know, PDFs and then of course the management is happy. So literally this takes a minute now to generate and that before would take days easily. Next chapter. So yeah, I think we definitely kind of fell into that, but obviously we're running a, you know, a studio like business. I think in the States you're less, less careful with using this term, but like in Berlin, yeah, they're running a business, not really something you would say to each other. But like, yeah, like I think um, at the moment, we, you know, uh, yeah, we are earning money with this. We, we, we're spending a lot of money making funds, so taking care of the website, um, working with freelancers, um, all kind of stuff uh, needs to be paid. And so also kind of, yeah, we also need to, need to make sure that we kind of also, also make, that, make that kind of uh, stay afloat. And so, so like, I just thought maybe I can give you like a little bit of, insight into that because all of that is like really really uh, talked about so i thought maybe it's nice to to give just like a bunch of facts like um so you know more i think in the last years also became more of a platform where we publish other people's work as well so at the beginning we it was really mostly the fonts that fabian and i were like drawing or like ha had started and then maybe completed uh, together with like like people working with us um but also more and more of course you build a network and you like you know it's nice to like help others, other, other artists kind of grow or like we like have a lot of friends who like draw fonts. So eventually if they kind of fit our catalog, we kind of like, you know, try to like publish them. So sometimes we have like convinced people to publish the work and the font got really successful or that have around. <laughs> um, but that's the deal. So if you publish something with us, it's like when you like, you know, go to like an art gallery. So, you know, you, you have to like, finish the work like the, the typeface itself it's it's yours you're the artist you kind of you that's kind of your responsibility or like also your idea and you kind of own that as well and you get like 50 percent from whatever we we make like from our um distribution um fees we make we collect for you and you know has the other half so again it's like this kind of in this together approach uh, and the 50 percent basically we do you know uh, distribution marketing all the legal work um all the boring stuff really to just like basically sell the fonts and that's kind of the kind of the 50 50 situation um yeah last time i checked uh this is kind of how, how our revenue 
is kind of is, is, uh, consists of. So I think yeah, it's really interesting to speak with colleagues. But for us, the case is that yeah, we like most of our income is font licenses. Um, for us, it has always been like that, which is maybe very lucky. Like I've talked to other people, and they for them it's the, the other way around that they work like it's the projects that make make more. But for us, it's font licenses. Obviously, sometimes it's kind of a mix because we sometimes maybe sell a license and then work on the font a little bit or like a, a commission might come with a license. So the first two are related, but that's kind of our main uh, main income. And then the hardware, you know, the t-shirts and the, actually I brought some stickers. So you can uh, maybe grab one later, um, make even less when I give them away for free. <laughs> um, so that almost like doesn't contribute and teaching lectures, stuff like that uh, also doesn't doesn't uh, give a lot, but like, I mean, it gives a lot in, in every other way. Uh, so we like, we like doing the, that stuff as well. But yeah, we based very much like, you know, licensing fonts. Um, to me, like, I mean, I went to art school and not a business person really like, it's totally crazy, but at the moment we really, uh, yeah, 10 to 15 is a bit like vague maybe, but like, we, I think at the moment we're actually 15 people uh, who at least one day per week work or like do something for Dynamo. Ethan is here. Like he always says I shouldn't call him a lawyer, but like uh, he helps with like legal work, for instance, and as a type designer as well. So like Ethan, for instance, works one one day per week, uh, and we get a lot done in that in that time. And other people, you know, from there it's like up to full time. There's like different tasks, you know, that that need doing uh, writing. I think I have a slide. Yeah, administration two days, for instance, custom support three days, legal one, from production five, graphic design. Uh, as a footnote here, so there's a little bit of graphic design happening still, but like, you know, web development, these are the kinds of things that we're dealing with now. And to, to me, this is like mind blowing because yeah, I never thought it, it, would, it would get to that point. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of your you know, waking up to that. And I think at the moment we're like wondering if like how we can, can, can scale down a little bit again. Um, yeah, also in terms of like, you know, because it's like the business chapter, I think when like the, the 2017, 20 years, you can see here, it's like our old website, the inbox constantly like having emails that are like unread in it. And I think it was a bit stressful for us. So I think Fabian and I got a bit more aware of yeah, what it means to work like in a kind of sustainable way, or like how, how can you like kind of be a bit more in control of of the thing you love very much, but also like can be exhausting and maybe it feels like never ending. So we kind of said that maybe 2021 onwards, the idea should be that there's no in like zero inbox. So there's nothing in the inbox. So um, basically I think the challenge would be to, to kind of reduce, like do things in a smart way that maybe uh, you have, you know, uh, less open questions. So like people having to ask less, less questions about the licensing, uh, our first website was kind of unstable. So for instance, it was, it was cheap for us to do, but it broke down all the time. So we suddenly found ourselves fixing the website all the time. So that gave me a lot of gray hair. Um, so maybe we thought, okay, maybe try to like uh, save some more money and make a better website. Even like simple things that I can get excited about now is like, how does actually invoicing work? Like how do we invoice, you know, like, so I think at the moment we run this like hardcore policy that we invoice the full amount of a project and we want this paid whole amount and we only deliver the funds when we have that money um so that is doesn't always work exactly but like it helps us because we re rarely running after invo unpaid invoices and we did this a lot you know like very unfulfilling discussion you know um so like uh, no money no funds you know it's also something you can explain to somebody you can like can make it a two or something so, you know, how does it work? How do add-ons work? You know, if you want to share your fonts, like, you know, do we have to open a huge, do you have to make an extra thing for that? Or can you maybe do this on the website with a little click, stuff like that. And then we have like all these like unfinished typeface that we like share with our friends, like mouthwash for instance. And then wanna like, how do we send them to them? Like, do we send them by like email or is it, can that be like a mailing list? How does it still feel personal? You know, all these like questions um, are, Interesting. So with the new website, we kind of try to like deal with a lot of this stuff. Then I think another thing that we wanted to really make more simple is like how font licensing work itself. 
and we did the, the project title was unfuck licensing and we kind of had the feeling that yeah licensing is like a super difficult uh, topic and we did this little survey which kind of proved us us right in a way that uh, you know most designers don't don't uh, enjoy this process or don't really know even if, if they did it right or don't understand the terminology i mean i don't even know really the terminology like traffic views clicks and i mean i'm selling it so like that's kind of weird no so yeah it felt very unsatisfying that maybe like you buy something you vouch for it you convince your client that it's great and then you like go through this like weird process of of you know licensing font in a very complicated way another thing that we felt was that licensing isn't really fair so with this like very common model of um, licensing fonts by computers you know like you have this thing like con how many computers will you install the fonts on uh, the big companies always run away with a better price because they say we have a small marketing department but it's like coca-cola and they buy like three licenses you know for three computers and the little art art um, publisher actually only owns three computers and maybe actually also has to install the font on three computers so it's kind of the same same deal for both and that felt really unfair and the whole thing like of who pays you know who has to pay who uses who has the benefit and so on like that was something we think a lot about and try to like incorporate in into like an improved system um so on the left it's like the common model of a licensing fonts i think still is like you know you define apps workstations visitors domains and it's like very like i think complicated or too complicated and on the right it's like how it works with us now is that you just need to define your your size so with that, I think it's it's easier, like, you know, the bigger company had pays relatively more, but I think adequately to what they can can afford. And the small company pays less. And then, for instance, what I mentioned earlier, when you want to share the fonts, you just have to, like, hit this button and you pay a little up, uh, up, I don't know what the word is, you know, go premium, I think. And then um, that's it. And honestly, like, our, our uh, inbox traffic went down, like, crazily you know because you didn't have to explain any of that anymore and i think also designers have a have an easier time explaining it imagine even like having to uh, you know define traffic for a project that hasn't launched yet you know it's like impossible another thing that we did with good old ethan is making this a little bit simpler like the the licensing terms you know i think i had written the first terms 2019 or oh, that was already like a revision i was very very proud of myself of, of this document and then Ethan came in and kind of collapsed it down to like four pages so this is the terms that you have to like understand like how you how can you use the fonts and we worked on that and I think again um, made our like office life much easier uh, because people have less questions it's so very clearly written so it's, it's also like design in a way I think you're designing the way you're working and the way you're relating to other people um, comments Ethan yeah and there's a free font so if you read the whole eula you'll find a link and you get this crazy font <laughs> some people have found a font yeah true yeah i see what i've done for other people i want that for myself so that's about licensing um do you still have energy because i have like 100 more okay so what I find super exciting and I'm grateful for is working with Vanessa and Rhea, who do our like accounting administration and uh, business intelligence, another word I learned. And so basically they're really good with data and making and they're very smart with data. So they kind of like filter everything we are selling and they kind of filter it down to different categories and we kind of can look at this together and we can say, hey, actually this uh, never gets bought. So maybe something's wrong stuff like that so we're trying trying to like maybe understand like approach it from a from a different door because i think fabian and i are very like intuitive and not really good with numbers um but we can still get excited in a way about, about this stuff um so they can produce things like this um which is you see that oh so it's like the share of weights across different families so which font weights are actually being bought, bought the most because in the end you like design a lot of weights it's a lot of work but then regular is like the big winner so you could easily start a foundry just making regular fonts so maybe we should do this as a little artistic project 
But um, yeah, stuff like that's interesting to see. These are like different license types. Um, yeah, so I think we very much, yeah, you can see like our, the, our designers using our fonts, they use the fonts mostly on, on for print and, and web kind of projects and less so for like, you know, apps, yoga apps, fitness apps, stuff like that, maybe one day. But like, I think our, our customers are mostly still like, I would say graphic designers, graphic designers. Uh, let's see how true that is, but that's I mean, my wish in a way. Um, here, what's interesting is that also with the new website for the first time, I mean, did this like almost like a e-commerce crash course, I would say. We also offered our fonts as bundles, something we never really thought about a lot, because I think we're from this, this school where, you know, you, you choose a font, you choose one style, and then that's the, your, you know, then you design a poster, which looks like a little Swiss and stuff, you know, that's how kind of how we, how we uh, approached our whole licensing at the beginning. So we also didn't even think of people maybe wanting to use several weights together, or like an upright and italic together. But then we introduced bundles and you can see that people like want bundles in a way and they don't want less the, the, the purple line, which is individually had picked styles, but they like, I think the projects require, or maybe the type of customer now uh, needs, needs a bit more, needs an italic, you know, needs, needs other things to highlight the design. I actually wanted to delete this slide, but like now we have it. Uh, it's a bit unfulfilling unsatisfying slide, I think, but you can see that most people still buy one license only. So maybe for one project and then, uh, and then it's followed by the people who do both and then less the bigger projects. So maybe it's just nice to like, you know, compare to like in 10 years when I'm retired. Um, this was super nice actually. Uh, so, you know, before, um, Fabian and I like spend a lot of time, you know, writing invoices for font licenses um, because, you know, people had a little question or they said, hey, could I have this or could I have a discount, for instance? And we lo really love to do get discounts, so don't be shy to ask if you need one. But like whenever we were granting a discount, we had to make a manual invoice. So we had to open InDesign and so on and make a PDF and send it and then I could do a whole thing with no money, no fonts and stuff. I mean, was very like unhappy mom, uh, years, but our website now can do that much better. So our website can like use discount codes and so on. So you can see that since we launched a new website, the online shop, the green line is going up and the direct sales line is going down, which was really, really nice. So again, us having more time to spend on design and stuff like that. Um, yeah, orange line is really nice to see that the small and medium like small companies are still our, our strongest customers, which is, I think we just like, like that. Yeah. So our licensing seems to work for small or you have big ones that pretend they're small. I mean, that would be the <laughs> other thing. Um, that is another thing that are like, again, like this is all the fonts we sell and you can see that we have a lot of fonts, like also maybe the more experimental fonts that don't really sell a lot, but we have like a bunch of top sellers and they kind of carry the whole boat, which I never spoke with anybody else about this. I don't know if that's a lot that's uh, similar for like, you know, business in general, but like that, that's how it is for us. Yeah. Mm. Then in terms of like how distribute work, like we, we thought it would be nice to slow down the release process a little bit. So like we, we invented this kind of lock. So like in, instead of just like, like publishing a font and saying, okay, here's the font, we kind of early access, like we create a, a semi-published font, which then you have to access using this lock. And the nice thing here is that it really also starts a conversation between people. So like, you know, we don't like, you don't, don't need to write a whole like uh, Dostoevsky novel here, but like you can just like, um, there, maybe you just want to say something or you also can say nothing, that's also fine. But often like a lot of really cool stuff came out of it. So like maybe if someone say, hey, I want to do this project. Maybe we won't even want to talk about this. Could it be a custom font or I'm in the area, should we have a copy? Like, you know, everything can, can be in this box and we basically get this. That's like how our like panel, like our dashboard looks and we, we kind of get this little, you know, blurb and, you know, somehow it's nice to kind of have this little conversation with people and yeah. 
So basically we unlock the access and then you can like license the phone. Funny enough, the whole thing really took off once we added the lock. So it's interesting, you know, psychology wise, you know, yeah, add a lock, people want what's behind the lock. Yeah. Yeah, student fonts, if you if the students here, um, give um, we yeah, also give like discount for students because we think it should just be easy to have a font as a student and not not pay so much. So we made these like bundles, and basically I think you can buy a whole library for like 100, 100 bucks, um, and work with these fonts. We have two more chapters. One is um. I'm really excited about that. It's because I feel like we launched it almost when I was on the way to the airport to New York, which is the, the font customizer. It's a totally new thing that we worked on like also like for two years, I think. And here the observation was that, you know, we, we when designing a font, you, you may have like alternates or you have variations of characters that either you dismiss or you maybe you want to keep because you think they, they nicely like flavor the font as well. Like, so you have like, you know, you have a, a single story G like in, in social and you have a, a double story G and you know, you basically pack these alternates into typeface anyway, or especially we like to do it. I also know that there's a different school of thought where people say you must not do that or something. But I think for us, this is like digital, um, you know, making digital fonts also means you can make them very, like fill them <laughs> to the top. Um, but the, the problem was a little bit that designers would then really like these alternates uh, and maybe want to propose them to a client or like work with them in a more easy way. And they always had to like activate the alternates, like, you know, for instance, in InDesign using the open type panel and it's like super like hidden. Um, so like a lot of people like contacted us with requests like that. Hey, could you maybe, I like the, the, the alternate G, could you swap it with the, the standard G or like, you know, the lowercase Y, could you swap with the other Y and so on. And it's of course something we like totally down to do, but eventually you can see the leads to like big conversations suddenly, you know, because, you know, how should we swap? Like, what is the name of the new font? Like, how long does it take? Should we charge something for it? You realize like huge things suddenly, you know? And so we thought, okay, this is like, maybe something that, that we could solve in a better way for like both, both sides. Here you can see like just custom fonts we did in a year, you know, little like modifications. And often it's just doing a little, little thing. Um, but of course, it's something you, you carry in your, your mind. You know, your mind load is, is bigger. Um, so what we just, uh, just launched uh, last week is the, the font customizer. Um, and it works like that. So basically, you like, it's embedded straight into our shop. So you go, you know, maybe you want to work with, like, you wanna, you're working with your type, and you can kind of select it. And instead of like now purchasing it, you can like kind of open the customizer and it opens this panel like on top of it. Um, and in this panel, you kind of see, you know, I think I always imagine this a little bit like an elderly phone, you know, like with big buttons and it's kind of hard to miss. And you kind of in a very playful, or like very simple way, you can kind of select the alternates or make them the default or undefault. And, and then you kind of close the thing and kind of purchase the font. So it kind of generates the fonts for you on the fly. So that's like something that is kind of solved on, the, on our server. So our server kind of takes your input, and generates new files for you. So in a way, for instance, here you can see the type and the kind of alternates it has or different font Oracle. And it's kind of nice to see really how, you know, just a tiny change or just a tiny selection or reselection of already what's available kind of really can flavor the the font a very different way. Like if you look at the, the word in the bottom bottom left, like round diaries, double, double story G, single story J, uh, G, I mean. Um, and this is something you can do like, you know, for a client or with a client together, you can kind of, maybe it's an old client, so you recognize the LLV font style, uh, but you can do this kind of together and yeah, create your own custom font. Um, I'm not sure what's happening here. Yeah, the nice thing here is also, I think that's a video, is you can also rename the font. So I think that's that's also super handy. Like if you want to, you know, maybe find the font in the font menu or you want to give the title of your 
your pet cat or like of your project basically you can kind of rename the font as well and it will show up in all the all the different tools as well even in word which gives us usually a lot of pain so i hope it doesn't break eventually but like even in word you have to name yeah so i think that's very much what we try to solve instead of having to activate and just temporarily activate um study six sets you can kind of you know generate the font have it in there just with your setting and there's nothing more you, you need to do and the nice thing is that it also works with older fonts that you purchase so if some of you have licensed a font from us you can kind of log in again and now open a customizer yeah there won't be a second date but at least she knows what the font customizer is <laughs> last project um yeah, I wanted to talk about a new uh, a new release, or like a project we've been working on for a while with friends together, uh, Leo and Simon from Omni Group. Um, they're based in Switzerland, like the French part of Switzerland. And it's more like a, a research research design kind of project. And it's, it deals with like kind of the legacy of the teacher Walter Kech. So Walter Kech is a, is a Swiss, Swiss dude who was the teacher of Adrian Frutiger, for instance. So in his work, he like very much influenced, you know, you can see in, in Walter Case kind of study folders and drawers, like how he influenced uh, fonts like Helvetica, Univer. So like he's a really influential guy, but kind of unknown, which is really interesting. And Fabian, who's really like, um, has a great like knowledge in, in kind of type history and like great, like um, is very excited about like, you know, finding like old specimens or like little leaflets and stuff. He kind of found this like, this like folder on the left, which has just teaching annotations of Walter K. So Walter K is not, not necessarily known as a, as a graphic designer, but more like really as a teacher. So he like had these teachers, these like folders, which then he would like hand out to his students and they would kind of study letter forms together. So that was like one source that we had. And on the right, like uh, in, a, in a secondhand store in, in Switzerland, like Fabian found this like other folder, which again gives like construction, guidelines and commentary on how to construct letters and has a little cute Walter Kech kind of writing inside as well. And that's Walter in the middle. So yeah, we got really excited about like, like first like really just studying them, like how he's talking about like proportions, like how do things like align? He was like super obsessed with aligning things. You can see like all the open strokes, see as a little, they all like align perfectly. It's kind of nice. Um, so like he did like, you know, that's just, that's like really taken from the folder. And other examples here, you can see that they're not really meant as typefaces, which was interesting because like you would not really draw a W that wide, right? If you make a font, like it would like, it would like be kind of blocking out the, would be like too wide basically, but like he was just really interested in like teaching the construction first. It's really beautiful in itself, of course, the drawings. Um, and he has it like fingerprints all over Switzerland. So maybe like, I imagine like students of Walter when they later went out into the world working as graphic designers, maybe designing logos like Migos, like a supermarket, which is big. Maybe they were like have, kind of take that as a starting point. So you can see Walter's traces all across Switzerland every now and then. Here's Leo in the middle, like taking a picture for 27. And a long time ago, like when we worked with Dan, who I showed earlier, who looks like Jan Chichol, uh, we did a custom font for him for the Kunsthalle Zurich, which is like huge like art um, art venue in Switzerland. And we kind of used a Walter Kech kind of sample characters as the typeface uh, of Kunsthalle Zurich. And you can see him here with like posters that he designed. And now kind of the stories kind of merge because Omni Group, like Simon and Leo, they were also excited about Walter kind of totally in their own right and time. And they had also used like digitizations of Walter Kech letters. And we kind of like, uh, you know, became friends and then we kind of noticed, hey, maybe it would be nice to do like a Valta project together and kind of merge the, merge the efforts. Um, so kind of on, on Favel and my end, we did like the, let's say the, the old Valter, the kind of sources. And what was interesting here is that we really tried to like most faithfully digitize these like folders, you know, and the folders didn't have more letters than that because it wasn't like fonts, you know, it was really like just like to show like teach these like core principles. And we kind of located three different styles. And you can see that two are like very similar. 
in weight already. So they're both like regular, and then you have this like heavy one, which has much more contrast as well. So you can see a bit of like the Univer or like Futiger vibes in here already. Um, and then Leo and, and Simon kind of worked on the Neue, the new Walter, which is kind of reimagining Walter as a, as a new digital typeface, you know, with like, again, stylistic sets, all kind of stuff, a weight range, italics. Um, so that's kind of how we defined then the project. You can see here with Medi also who does all our writing. I was kind of like talking, talking about the project a lot. Um, so on the left, we can, we have the Walter Alte, which is the old Walter, which is like three styles as we found them unchanged. And then the Walter Neue is kind of the, the new part of the package. And the names are a bit strange, like it's, it's like smoking, Rauchwaren is like cigarettes and Röntgen therapy is like, you know, when you do an X-ray. So we, we named the fonts also in the, in the way that, uh, you know, the, these like sample words, words were drawn. Um, Rauchwaren, normal grotesque, normal, normal grotesque and Röntgen therapy. And on the right, you also stick to like a German spelling. So that's kind of the package. And something I'm going to release, I think, like in, in one or two weeks. And also here we stuck to this like obsession with like aligning strokes, mm -hmm. which kind of creates a, an interesting like a rhythm and rigidity. Um, yeah, and funny enough, like I think we got excited about graphic design again, like kind of for our own graphic design. So like we uh, I've been doing much more like design production, like I'm trying to create like a world around our, our work or the work that we publish. Also, we're very much more aware of, you know, you need to publish, you know, you, you work on something, but you also have to kind of craft the journey kind of that it's taking later, or that can be very exciting too. So we work with Mati and Saskia together here from our team who, who you know, do things like these, you know, announcing upcoming fonts with dogs. Nice that the dog is here, now the dog is gone. <laughs> But that's kind of our, I would say, advertising language. So the question was also like, what should we do with Walter? You know, like what could be the story here? And one approach was maybe to do something with this like ABC Walter toy blocks. Um, and the other one was this like, where's Waldo thing, you know? <laughs> and this is like a mock-up. I, I wanted to hide the variable font or something, but it's like, didn't really work. And then we thought, hey, maybe it's much better to do like the old and the new Walter together. So it's Walter old and Walter new. So uh, Saskia has, uh, and Mati have like drawn these like nice, you know, what father and son moments, uh, what they're doing together, you know, like helping it, <laughs> helping each other across the street, you know, reading books, their own books, playing chess on a Union Square, <laughs> you know, smoking, uh, maybe vaping here on the. <laughs> Vaping in here like has a little cigar, you know, teaching it or the iPhone, carrying the W. Yeah, maybe maybe less orthodox stuff. <laughs> Alter, what are you doing? Also, yeah, here, these are the two like little gardening and yeah, that's the end of my lecture. Thanks for listening. <laughs>
on the other hand, of course, the communication, like, you know, when earlier we, we talk about like making things more easy in a way, this could like maybe create a huge new, you know, rabbit hole of problems where, you know, clients do the wrong setting and so on. Um, maybe the, what answers it is, is that you can always regenerate them. So ideally, there's no limit to regenerating the fonts, which is also like we kind of took a deep breath, you know, when we decided that, because also there's no limit to maybe reusing the fonts everywhere, you know. But like, basically, if you make a mistake, you can lock back in and just regenerate them. So I think that should kind of solve it. But that needs to be communicated again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think we are quite good at at listening. Like, kind of, the, I think intuitively we do a lot of that, but also it takes a long time because while you're thinking of how you should improve something like life is going on the same way or like quicker or something so you have to kind of make make space for that so sometimes um i think fabian and i talk over phone almost every day it's like like an old married couple kind of this thing and um so i think we really like keeping each other like we basically really talk a lot and then kind of try to say okay this is not really important or something or say okay i had a it happened again we now need to like fix it and then going to see this guy michael really helps because you're almost like I think it's like a psychological trick, like almost like owe it to him, you know. Mm -hmm. So like you, we say, okay, this is really important. Like I say, hey, I'm exhausted. I don't wanna write these emails anymore. And then like, Michael says, Fabian, do you think Johannes should write these emails? And Fabian says, no, I don't. You know, I think. And he's like, okay, let's let's define it. Let's write it down. And next time you have to solve, you know. So that really helps. Um, but other than that, I'm, that sounds really boring. But I think also like just having to-do lists and visualizing that stuff helps. I think um, so. For instance, we use Notion. You know, have to you know whenever you have an idea, you can like kind of, kind of put it there. I think it helps to just see. Okay, this is here. This is on top. Or I'm full. Like my week is actually full already. Like maybe, uh, but it's very difficult. I think. Yeah. I mean, it sounds better on when I say it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I think I would say I think the type scene is mostly quite like friendly with each other or they don't know each other at all, you know, <laughs> like, so I think we're like still, yeah, I don't know where we are on that like map, you know, so but like, I think we had, um, for instance, to, to, share, to spill a little bit of tea, I think, as you say, in, <laughs> yeah, so I think for instance, we had people like ask us, hey, how does it work? Is it successful? You know, and then we like spend time because we like were excited to talk and like say, yeah, totally. We had like Zoom calls, you know, with people and then explain and show them stuff, show them how it works and so on. And then they would like also change the licensing model to that and say, hey, this is our new idea. You know, that kind of, I thought it was a bit shitty, you know. <laughs> um, no, like otherwise, no, 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 like bad vibes. Yeah, you? Oh, um, so what other designers do you ever collaborate with like international or other um, law and law team type of projects? Because it seems like it's a lot of the customer, customization of things like just the product itself. Totally. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Is that one as well? Do you ever? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like, I think we don't really, we haven't worked with other like foundries, mm -hmm. you know, like bigger foundries, which um, I mean, we partner with. Uh, Type project, which is a Japanese uh, um, kind of typeface producer, and Sandal, which is a Korean one, but they don't um, make uh, the extensions for our, our fonts, but they kind of distribute our work. So there's there's a bit of a, a connection there, which is really interesting. Um, but then we have, I think, Favorite is our font that we have like really tried to extend, like cover a lot of scripts. So we have Hangul now, um, Cyrillic, Greek, Hebrew, Arabic, and we have drawn them all like with local designers but like individual like freelancers basically or like who do their own work like you know different different people really but like they um yeah i think it's super important so basically you have to like establish a bit of an understanding uh, i think how it works is that we like describe 
what in Latin the font should be doing somehow. And then they try to translate that into their own script and like, you know, moves like favorite, for instance, has things like the flipped A, which gives me a lot of pain, by the way. Uh, people want to always flip the A back, A back. But like basically, um, you know, things like things are flipping, you know. So then uh, in Cyrillic, they say, hey, you know, in Cyrillic, if you would like flip something, it would maybe be something like this. And so that's an interesting conversation. But like, we wouldn't like touch, we wouldn't draw it ourselves. I think that's not right. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Yes. yes. Yeah. Cool. Here we go. Mm. Yeah. Um, we did that like two years ago. I think we did. Um, we were. I don't know. I think we they maybe didn't think about it too much, but we 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 were like, you know, we, we regarded font piracy as, as a problem in a way, and I think we also just realized that it's a really unhealthy way to, of spending your day, you know? And it wasn't even me, or like initially I was writing these emails, but then someone from team took over and I saw her like writing these angry mails all the time. And then even you're like, you know, think, telling people, hey, you're too big actually or something, you know? And we had like really big cases where we, we went, went after it and that was actually very easy to solve because it's clear, you know, like the breach is, is so obvious, you know? But um, I think we also like here really just decided to, to maybe spend time in a more productive way, like maybe making fonts instead of like checking licensing. Um, but maybe like, you know, one day it could be something where you say, okay, it, it could, yeah, I think you, someone could take care of that or something. But also again, the question is how to do it right. Because for instance, I myself, even I wrote, I wrote an email to like whatever Red Bull, you know, who like breach our license big way. And then that that company uh, created a huge trouble for the designer, who kind of didn't like you know did it kind of unknowingly. And then I felt like super bad immediately, you know, because the designer is like, oh fuck, I have all this trouble with Red Bull now, you know. Mm -hmm. And so like somehow you're like you're almost like competing with the people actually your supporters. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, we're not redoing this now. Yeah, hopefully it's so easy that you're like you know kind of do it right or something. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, Sabrina asks, I noticed you use the custom access for Arizona serif slash SRFL. Did you invent that access? And if you did, were there any issues using that in software along the way? Oh, that was for the San Francisco project, I think that's meant. Yeah. So we did a custom work with Collins, like an agency here, and I think, you know, and then they, um, so they asked us to do a typeface for the rebranding of the San Francisco Symphony. And for that, the, the whole thing was like that the typeface should like grow and become a more narrow and wider kind of being like musically. And for that, we did draw, draw a new axis that just like for that, which was this like super tall skyscraper like version of the font, like super squeezed and then would kind of expand and like go up and down. And uh, yeah, so that was custom for the project. Yeah, totally. Was another, another ah project uh, problems a lot of problems so <laughs> um, we ended up doing a tool that we call a font modulator which helps you to install the font and then kind of define the different setting um, but I wouldn't say it's a great uh, like perfect solution like it's more like I think it helps a designer to you know create settings of the of the font quite quickly. Um, without having to kind of do it yourself, but like it works only in like a bunch of Adobe software. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's perfect. So I think the question is always like, yeah, how, how do you hand something over like that? Collins, for instance, eventually gave, you know, like left the project or I don't know how he said it properly, like, you know, they were done and then the in-house team took over. And I think at that point, like always something kind of else happens. Uh, yeah. Really interesting to see. I feel like it's pushing the like uh, variability like closer towards the actual like end user of like you can submit that just to a client or something. Mm -hmm. How do you guys see this kind of like tool production? Like how far downstream do you see that going? Are you guys making tools like this for designers, or do you want that to be something that like an everyday person is actually able to just you know drop in and use? And then also, how do you see that? that how do you see that like um, 
working in inside of these softwares that are just like incredibly homogenized at this point, which is like just the Adobe suite and everything. And like, is that a problem for you guys? Do you want to keep routes of like alternative uses of typography outside of like, I don't know, mm. that underground suite and everything? Yeah, interesting. I think. I think where we most feel at home is, is if we can include these tools in our own cosmos in a way, like in our, our own website, basically. I think like the one customizer thing makes me feel joyful and happy, you know, because it's kind of in our own domain and we kind of can deal with the problems ourselves. I think with Adobe particularly, I don't see like, I hope, you know, other programs will kind of catch up like Figma, for instance, I think they're much more open and supportive. Um, I think it would be super nice if like, let's say my mom would use the phone gauntlet. Um, I don't think she tried. <laughs> um, yeah, I have nothing against it, basically. I think it's maybe a question of, um, basically, I think we not dealing with that so much. You know, we, we're more dealing with, with at the moment what, because we're still like a small team, I think what you, we can feel as very urgently. Like what we did actually a couple of years ago, we consulted Instagram on how something like that could happen. That was mostly exciting for us because we went to San Francisco. Uh, I kind of like to see the offices and stuff. But like, I think that was very much about that. How could could this variability like can, could be experienced by some like on a fingertip and stuff? But I think it's super hard to like develop something like that at, at a big scale, right? And then I think we're not tech enough to really, really do that, you know? So it's still like amateur tech, I would say, yeah. You know, it's like it comes back from a, um, you know, uh, together with his friend Dan, who I mentioned already a couple of times. We were pitching for like a youth, youth house um, kind of center in Geneva called Dynamo with the Y, um, and we kind of lost the pitch. And the whole thing like kind of didn't happen and it doesn't exist anymore. But back then we kind of got got aware of the name and I thought it's kind of nice, like you know the energy that kind of it's been like an energy producing machine. The Dynamo, I think, you know, is it the same in America, but I can, you know, I have a Dynamo on my bike, you know, like, and I pedal on the mixed light and stuff. So um, then we thought, hey, this could be a nice name and we can take that from the pitch. <laughs> and then uh, we, we kind of chose the Italian spelling you know, with the I. Yeah. Thanks. It has a lot of vowels, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a really the best, I think, yeah goes up and down when you speak it, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. I think, to be honest, um, you mean tools, right? I think we really talk a lot just among the team about stuff that we're interested in in general. You know, like, I don't want to give you like a stupid answer, but like, I, we don't really look at like design too much. We don't have a big Pinterest, you know, we don't collect inspiration, something like that. I think other people do this really well. Um, but I think maybe we started just late enough to not really do this too much. Um, and then we also like, um, I think actually look at uh, like specimen books, like I think old books, you know, that you can source anywhere, like look at them, maybe then try to like apply other and like new ideas to them. Um, no, but I think the people we work with also like collaborators, I think they're all like really interesting people. So like just talking to them, like I think it can give you like a lot of like, ed like inspiration in a way. And also I think being an outsider, because we are we're all not really trained type designers, like we kind of working in a field that's a bit like strange to us as well. So a bit like, you know, you don't feel like you owe it too much, but you also don't really know too much about it. I think it's very healthy. So like somehow maybe like um, trying to be this like guest, I think would be my tip. Yeah. That's very vague. Mm -hmm. Thank you.